Uh, there was a mistake. It said consultation twice. It's actually crown. Uh, so this is something I think everyone needs to know, but it's really important that you understand that since we've combined basic and advanced together, that this is an advanced topic. There is uh, a time to do crown work this afternoon for the physicians, but you should not be doing crowns in your first few years in practice. This is something that's truly an advanced topic. <clears throat> Disclosures. I made, uh, I think, 72 bucks this last year, so that's my disclosure. <laughs> How do you explain something a patient typically doesn't see, right? This is in the back of the head. How do you explain that to them if that's what they, what they would benefit from? How do you explain the benefits? Well, you have to present all sides of the picture. And to me, a lot of times, you just focus on how someone sees it from the back side. But really, it's all sides. So what does that mean? Well, let's talk about it. The obvious is the back. When someone's, you know, the bleachers behind you looking at you, or as Vance talked about in the, in the airplane, the baldness in the back is obvious. But the other thing, from a side view, and you'll see some before and afters, it creates a rounding effect. Because if you look at someone that's bald in the crown or balding, there's a flattening effect that you can see in that back side. And believe it or not, a good percentage of those hairs that arch upwards this way will actually create and improve visual density from the front. If you think about that, it's an, it will add to the visual density. So I'll show you um, some concepts of how to uh, improve that. Who's a candidate? Patient selection is so important, so there's going to be some criteria. First thing is, in general, I would say over 35 years of age. Have I done anyone under 35? Yes, very few. But these are one of those things that, you know, just like when you started with the hairline yesterday in the workshop, you want to have parameters of safety. And why is that? Because you continue to lose hair, and yet it gets wider and wider and wider, and you get more and more problems with trying to cover your tracks. So if you got someone at 25 balding in the back, you know you may not ever have enough hair to cover that and you can have an unnatural result over time. So something you have to, to, to remember. The other thing is we have to think about how important the front is. When you guys were drawing hairlines yesterday, I was trying to emphasize you want to go low enough that there is an aesthetic frame to the face because you want to frame the face, but obviously not so low it's unnatural or they run out of donor hair. But the idea is that you want that aesthetic frame. So if you don't have that done, the crown is of secondary aesthetic importance. And you want to help a patient um, who may be focused on the crown at least to be educated. You don't want to force them to do the front, but you want to educate them to consider the front being a, an area of prime importance. And sometimes it also looks unnatural. You do the crown and the front is completely empty. It just, the pattern doesn't represent nature. So you really want to look oftentimes at the Norwood patterns and memorize them so you understand what is natural, what's not. And you also want to highly consider stabilization of that hair with uh, finasteride, minoxidil, just to limit that progression. Is it a safety mechanism? Not really, because in ways you got to understand that if they take it or not take it, they may stop taking it. So you can never predict that you're going to bank everything on their continuing to take that, because once they stop, they lose everything they gained over the time they were on that medicine. Um, and also, remember, you, uh, it's, this is a law of supply and demand. So supply is back here, which constantly gets depleted, and demand com continues to worsen as we get older. So that ratio worsens. So you have to mentally project not only where is the supply and demand issue today, but where is it going to be in 10 years, in 20 years. And that's why age is so important. That's why looking at the density back here, looking at how much you've got to cover on the back, and making sure that you have the judgment to predict that you're not going to run out of hairs and leave the person a cripple. I'm, I use those words not lightly. Those words are truly what I see coming through the office, and you don't want to be the person committing that crime. So the other thing is you have to really educate a patient that they need more than one procedure over their lifetime. And that's true for anything. You heard that from Vance, you heard that from all the other lectures. But the crown is particularly important regarding that matter. So this is more of a theoretical uh, sort of thing that uh, Ziering did a study just looking at what percentages of different patterns are out there. So this is really not practical, but it's just so you understand these are the patterns that exist in nature with the percentage breakdowns you see on the bottom of the screen. Okay, so the, the clockwise world being the most common in men. The patterns that exist, it's a circle or oval type thing, or it can look sort of like a kidney bean. And then this other one is a coronet, and you really got to look for that sometimes. There's this little shading at the bottom where if you wet the hair, you start to see that. We'll talk about that in a moment. But that extra little pattern, you heard that from Paul Shapiro, is that that little uh, extra little area below could be not a safe area to harvest from. Billboard effect. I don't know who, I think, was it Parsley came up with this? I don't know. It's a great concept. The, the billboard idea is when you remember the box that I drew the other day, the back side of the head is a vertical plane. So people see it straight on. It means you're looking at bald scalp. It's much harder to hit a billboard and make it look 
dense because you're looking at it directly on versus from a side view, which you would be when you're looking at the top. Because this, you're seeing the, the bald scalp from a, a side view. You don't see this. So I always undersell the crown. I usually tell my patients, you may need two to get any kind of reasonable visual density. And it's important to undersell what you can deliver on the crown because it's difficult. Sometimes the take is not as good. It's very hard. And plus, the final thing is, you see this, the spiral effect. The graphs, instead of having, like in the front, all the soldiers, that is the graphs, lined up in a row and all interlocked and, and going back and helping each other to support each other's density. The crown is all spinning in a circle. It's picture of soldiers lying in a circle. They're not helping each other cover much density. So it's, it's harder to get visual density in the back because it's vertical and because every, all the graphs are in a circle. Planning the donor area. So remember what I said, look for that little coronet there. That's important that you see if there's extra loss around the bottom part. Wetting it can help or looking under some of those miniaturized hairs. And I need a lot. I mean, I harvest a long amount. You need to put a lot of graphs up there to get a result. I'm harvesting like 30 centimeters or so to try to get something in the crown. Most times, obviously depending on how big the crown is. And we'll talk about how wide an area to transplant right now. So the initial plan is, okay, that's what he needs. He needs this area to be covered. But is that all he needs? When you wet the hair, you start to see that there's actually a greater pattern of baldness that goes forward. And you really want to make sure that you cover that um, in that distance. In the older patient, you can be maybe a little more conservative because maybe he's not going to have much more regression or recession. In a younger patient, you've got to be really careful because you know he's going, to, he's going to progress forward. So you want to protect against that and perhaps go a little bit beyond uh, that area so he doesn't start to develop that fringe too early. How about women? Do women lose crowns? Typically, not as much, but what I have found is I call this a dumbbell design, which is the idea that they usually lose it uh, in this Christmas tree pattern. You'll hear that in my talk coming up, so we won't get into that right now. But there is sometimes a little involvement of the crown as well. So we'll talk more about this in my lecture coming up. But this idea is like I see this sort of being a small uh, little circle in the back and then spreading up to the, the front and being a, a wider area in the front. So what are the, the regions of the crown? This is a little uh, anatomy so that we can speak the same lingo here. The, the, the central whorl, okay, that's the, the maybe a dime or quarter size center part where it's coming out. Uh, the upper arc, which is a, a very, very important aesthetic area. And we're going to talk about prioritizing aesthetic areas. And this may be an advanced talk. And again, if this goes over your head, you at least realize where you can aspire to in a few years. So this may not make all, all that sense for people just starting. The vertex transition point or vertex transition zone, you heard that, that's the transition going from the crown over to the mid scalp, that's vertical to horizontal plane. And then the lower arc, which is basically anything below the whirl point. So, the other thing that's important, you heard earlier when we talked yesterday about how hair grows, there are very few abrupt changes in the head. So if you look at the fringe of the, of the crown, it goes out like that in a radial fashion. Now you create the whirl at the beginning of the case as your start point and you want to make sure the connections between are all smoothly uh, connecting over so there's no abrupt transitions and this little point where you see the dotted line is where it sort of angles and slightly changes so that's something that is important you really think about how the hairs transition there are no abrupt changes when you're working on the crown so the preferred design in general is in a clockwise pattern if they do not have any noticeable ghost hairs left and is basically naked back there. Why is that? In general, the reason in terms of planning is that if you think about the way that the hair parts and the way that most right-handed people comb, it covers the part. Remember I said that visual density from the front is so important. So the part is where it's split open and you want to be able to see that. It goes up and over like this. So it, it rises up over the part to cover the part visually from the front of the person. And it also e more easily combs with the patient because it follows the direct trajectory of his frontal hair. Hope that makes sense. Oops, sorry, I may have hit it twice. Sorry about that. Let me just 